This video is sponsored by the Disney Bundle, where you can get Disney Plus, Hulu, and ESPN Plus all together for one low price. Click the link in the description below, and I'll tell you more about the Disney Bundle later on in this video. One of the great things about streaming services like the Disney Bundle is that I can go back and revisit some of those classic retro TV series and movies that I grew up with, the ones where I know everything about them, and the ones where I remember them, but I haven't seen them in a while, or I haven't seen every episode of them. And that is the case with the classic 90s animated series, X-Men, which ran from 1992 to 1997. I remember that show, I love that show, but I did not watch every episode of X-Men the Animated Series when it first ran, and I haven't seen the cartoon in quite some time. The release of this series is unique. It was the little show that could. It had been pitched around and passed on by networks for years. It had a pilot in 1989 called Pride of the X-Men, but it only had one episode, and then they went back to the drawing board to eventually make this series. And when the show was supposed to premiere in the fall of 1992, it wasn't finished. An idea was had, take the two-part episode pilot and air it as a prime time sneak preview. The rest of the episodes, as well as re-airing the pilot, finished, happened in 1993. Yeah, I think doing this method actually worked in the show's favor because one, showing the two-part episodes at night in prime time already gave further cred that X-Men was a more serious cartoon than some of his peers. Two, by having it come out in early 1993, a lot of the other Saturday morning cartoons had already showed all their new episodes in the fall. So while a lot of the other cartoons were showing reruns, X-Men was able to air brand new episodes, which made them stand out and become really popular at the time it premiered. When I was growing up, I mostly learned about superheroes through cartoons, television shows, and movies, more so than comic books. I just didn't have a lot of access to comic books when I was younger. There were other superheroes that I already seen before. Some I've even seen more than one iteration of. So I think it was kind of cool that in the 90s, I was able to learn about a new group of superheroes for the very first time, and mutants on top of that. And if you know me, you know I love me some cartoon mutants. It was that 90s animated series that I still go, that's what introduced me to X-Men gotta give it its respect. All of the episodes are available on Disney Plus, so what I thought I would do is watch the two-part pilot episode, Night of the Sentinels, to see if I can get excited about this series once again by recapping it for you. Right off the bat, you know what the great thing about X-Men is? That theme song, oh my gosh, the moment that thing comes in, you're just like, yeah, let's go. Oh, it's so good. Showing you each character and they had their name really big. So you can be like, that's Gambit, that's Storm, that's Beast, that's Jubilee, that's Professor X, that's Jean Grey, that's Wolverine, that's Cyclops. Obviously you're getting a lot of characters in X-Men. This might be the first time that you're meeting the X-Men. They made sure you knew who they were with the names plastered across the screen to introduce all the characters and get you pumped with that song. The episode starts with Sabretooth attacking the city on camera. It's part of a news report where they're talking about mutants. Rrr, those mutants. And we meet the foster parents of Jubilee. So Jubilee, she's kind of our window to the X-Men world. World. Jubilee has the powers of sparking energy blasts from her hands. Definitely takes place around technology. She messes up VCRs and arcade machines. Remember, this is the 90s. So the foster parents are arguing about Jubilee being a mutant. She's not that far away. She can hear the whole argument. And the dad calls the mutant registration program, which is supposed to support mutants. If by supporting them, you mean send giant sentinel robots to their home who recognize them and then try to capture them and take them away, then yay support. Luckily, she ran away because she was so sad about what her parents were talking about and she went to the mall. Like, oh my God, let's go to the mall. Like I said, it's the 90s. So the Sentinels show up there and they bust to the mall. Like, look, I, look, I know that people are concerned about mutants in this series. Like there's all like, oh, these mutants are gonna ruin our lives. But yet these giant Sentinel robots, they come in, they break streets, <laughs> they break buildings, they bust into things, like what? <laughs> but luckily some X-Men that we are meeting for the first time showing off their powers are also at the mall. We get some storm action, we get some rogue action, fighting the Sentinels. We even get Gambit who throws those, those cards. He takes his time to get to the battle because he and this um, cashier lady, they kind of like flirt with each other. They kind of like get a little thing going, a little connection, a little spark. 
It's happening. That Cajun accent, you know, I can't resist. But eventually he sees the danger, goes and helps out. Cyclops also shows up as well. We get to see that blast from his eyes. Action's good. That theme song comes in in the background a little bit. That You're just like, yeah, I like this cartoon. We ain't even 10 minutes in and I'm hooked already with all this action. Jubilee is taken back to Professor X's school so she can be safe, but she freaks out, tries to run away. She runs into Professor X in the Jean Grey into Beast. You know, that very smart intellectual being covered in blue fur. And she also meets Morph. Morph has the power to change into anyone he sees. And he's always being comedic and a jokester. He's always got the one-liners. I like that Morph, man, he's funny. When Jubilee is running away, she accidentally goes into the X-Men training simulator. You know, if you're a superhero team, you gotta have a training simulator. Gambit comes in and also we get the first appearance of the bad boy of X-Men himself, Wolverine shows up and he fights the training simulation and then he just fights Gambit. Wolverine is just there to fight. He's all talking to Gambit like, say uncle. And Jubilee freaks out. She's an energy blast and Wolverine knocks him back. Everyone starts laughing. Wolverine looks at him and they're like, oh, we better stop laughing. I forgot, that's Wolverine. Storm's even like, hey Jubilee, we probably should go have a heart to heart talk um, somewhere else because you don't want to be around him when he get up. Trust me on this one. <laughs> I'm Storm. Storm has a heart to heart with Jubilee. She talks about who they are, where they are, what their mission is as X-Men, and of course, discovering your powers. And they talk about being a mutant. And Jubilee asks Storm, well, why do humans hate mutants so much? And then Storm drops that truth bomb. People fear what they don't understand. People fear what they don't understand. An important message that was taught in the 90s that we all learned and never had problems with ever again. The X-Men figure out the way that these Sentinels are being able to find all these mutants is that someone at the Mutant Control Agency must have a secret agenda. Someone behind the scenes is using the mutant registration program to get the names of mutants to then send the Sentinels out to capture those mutants. That's why the Sentinels could not recognize the X-Men. They knew they were mutants, but didn't know who they were because the X-Men ain't on that list. And the person doing this is a guy named Guy Rich. Henry Guy Rich is the one who's taking that list of registered mutants, sending the Sentinels out there, and he even funded another person, Trask, to build the Sentinels so he can use them for his nefarious deeds. Even goes as far as to capture Jubilee when she tries to head home to her foster parents. What I love about this scene is when she's heading home, there's a Sentinel that's like hiding behind a house so he can capture Jubilee after she passes by him. I'm like, wait, so you just bust through her house earlier, you bust through a mall, but now all of a sudden you wanna play stealth mode? Okay. Meanwhile, the X-Men are like, you know what? DC, the Mutant Control Agency headquarters, they got that list of mutants on register. We need to go in there, take that list, destroy that list so that no mutants have to be worried about getting caught by Sentinels. But Cyclops, he's questioning these methods and he's also questioning Wolverine who wants to go make sure that Jubilee is safe. And this leads to the beginning of those classic Cyclops versus Wolverine aggression face off where they just up at each other's face, don't want to follow each other's rules. And then you got Wolverine just Mouthing off the Cyclops, I go where I want to go. So the X-Men head to the Mutant Control Agency in DC, and they have some very nice, heartfelt conversations while they're going there, and how people around them treated them once they found out that they were mutants rogue. She has the power to suck life and energy out of people by touching them, and she found this out the first time that she kissed a boy. Morph talks about how he got out of trouble by changing himself into the principal. <laughs> that morph. <laughs> I love that guy. I can't wait to see what he does next. But to see a Saturday morning cartoon in the 90s take its time to have these conversations, learn more about these characters, feel a little sympathetic for them with the powers they have, even though it's also cool to see them use their powers. Very deep, very deep conversations. Then Wolverine shows up and says, shut up, y'all on a stealth mission. They boost Morph over the fence. He changes into a guard to fool the other guards. Classic Morph. Love that guy. Can't wait to see what he does next. And Storm is about to open a door, about to break in, not realizing that on the other side are a bunch of guards with weapons. You got the X-Men on one side about to open the door. You got the guards on the other side about to attack. And then the episode ends. It ends right there on a cliffhanger. Cartoon was like, see you next week. Could you imagine just ending on a cliffhanger like that? But I'm not gonna do that to you. We are gonna keep going. Let's talk about part two of this episode. Now, oh, wait a minute. I have my script in front of me, but now it doesn't seem to be there. Where are my notes? Where's my script? What happened to my script? We'll be right back after these messages.
Now I was able to watch X-Men the Animated Series because all of the episodes are available on Disney Plus, which is part of the Disney bundle. Disney Plus, Hulu, and ESPN Plus all together for one low price. Having these three streaming services together really covers the gambit of what you're looking for in entertainment. See what I did there with Gambit? See, yeah, I guarantee. Disney Plus, of course, has Disney, Marvel, Star Wars, Pixar, National Geographic. You can check out a lot of new original series and movies, as well as some of the great stuff I grew up with, like the Disney Afternoon and the Disney Channel shows, go into space with the Mandalorian, or hang out with the Rescue Rangers. You get movies direct to Disney Plus like Soul. You're even getting some new original series like WandaVision, which is part of the new set of Marvel series they're coming out with, including Loki, and the Falcon and the Winter Soldier. There's also the new Star Wars series that come out. If you saw that Disney Investor Day, you know a lot of stuff is coming to Disney+. Plus. So that in itself is a great deal, but then you go over to Hulu and you got even more things to watch because Hulu shows a lot of the recently aired television shows and movies, as well as has some original series and movies. Plus Hulu also has some retro nostalgia movies and sitcoms. I love those old school sitcoms, old school cartoons. And there's even uh, one or two retro cartoons that got themselves a few new episodes. And then you head over to ESPN Plus, they got live and archived sporting events from college basketball, college football, the UFC, the MLS, the NHL, the MLB, the PGA. If you know sports, you know what these letters mean. They also have tennis. They have the library of the 30 for 30 documentaries. Now, if you haven't seen these, they're great for sports fans. They're great for documentary fans. They really are able to take one particular part of sports history and make it something that's fascinating whether you know the sport or not. Obviously, this bundle has so many different franchises and series and movies that I love. So it was very easy to talk about the cool stuff that you can get from the Disney bundle, including the show I'm talking about right now. X-Men animated series. So if you're interested in the Disney bundle or maybe you have Disney Plus or Hulu or ESPN Plus or any of them or all of them, but you don't have the bundle, you might wanna check out the Disney bundle to get them all at one price. Click the link in the description that will give you all the details of how you can sign up and what you can get. Thank you so much to the Disney bundle for sponsoring this video. And now we're back previously on Black Nerd Comedy. What happened to my script? Oh, I just, I accidentally moved a window over in front of it. It's right there. I just, there was a window in front of it. I just had to push it aside. We're back. That was, a, that was a stupid cliffhanger. Let's move on. Part two. Wolverine stopped Storm from opening the door because he could smell the other side because that's the power he has. He's Wolverine. So Storm opens the door with some wind. But shh. There's just action everywhere. Cyclops is bringing the blast. Wolverine is bringing the anger. Storm is bringing the weather. Morph is bringing the changes. And the Beast is bringing the strength, as well as excellent appropriate quotes from scholars and distinguished authors. Quite. Seriously though, I praise this show for having all the deep conversations, all the metaphors and allegories to real life and talking about the mutant situation. But that being said, all that deep stuff aside, when this show wants to get into the action, it gets into the action and the action is good. Then the cartoon was like, oh yeah, Jubilee, we forgot about Jubilee, we gotta go back to Detroit. So they go back to Detroit, questioning Jubilee, tell us what you know about the X-Men. And she's all like, no, nah. and she's all like, get me out of here. And he's all like, no, nah, I didn't know about the X-Men first. And then he brings in Trask, who built the Sentinels, that Guy Rich paid for and he's like, made me some more Sentinels. And then I got the president on me and she's calling me. Yes, she, the president. And she's all like, why um, are these mutants fighting? She's like working out for some reason. And she's like, you know, these mutants are fighting back, which is Sentinels. Do they have a reason? Which I just found interesting. Like the president, she's going out there being like, I don't know about these mutants, but she's also going to Guy Rich and be like, I don't know about you either. <laughs> really, really, Madam President? Really? I'm trying to get rid of these mutants. You gonna be on me like that? All right, it's fine. Send all them out. Send all the Sentinels out. We getting them X-Men. We cut back to DC. The X-Men have destroyed all the files, all the mutants that were registered, no more. And they try to escape, but Sentinels show up and they have to fight the Sentinels again. One of the Sentinels shoots a blast at Wolverine. Morph notices, is like, Wolverine, watch out! Pushes Wolverine out of the way. And then it cuts to Professor X and Jean Grey. I'm like, what? Wait, what happened? And then Professor X and Jean Grey, they're all like, and they're all like, I don't sense morph anymore. I'm like, what, what, what does that mean? And then why the X-Men returning and they all looking sad and crying and why is morph not with them? He ain't there no more. Morph dead. This Saturday morning cartoon with a character that was prominently with the rest of the group, just, just, he's gone. <laughs> what? You don't do that. 
That is against the Saturday morning protocol. Like when a blast goes out, like a laser blast, you're supposed to get stunned. You ain't supposed to like get permanently stunned. But that's what happened with Morph. That's insane. That was a point even back in the 90s where I was like, this cartoon is the real deal. That's crazy. Go on, X-Men. Now, I've heard some things about Morph, but for right now, as of this moment, Morph dead. And what was interesting about telling this story is that they show the aftermath. They show everyone sad coming back and then they flash back to the actual battle where it happens. I thought that was a really cool storytelling technique. And in that story, you find out that Cyclops was like, hey, there's too many Sentinels, we gotta retreat. And Wolverine was like, no, we gotta stay here. But then Cyclops already seeing that Morph is gone is like, we all gotta go or else we're all gonna be gone. And when Wolverine fights back against it, Rogue even uses her power to drain a little bit of life from Wolverine to knock him out so they can take him back when he was resisting. So Beast is left behind and captured, Morph, Morph dead, and Cyclops is wondering if he made the right decision. He's feeling regret, he feels doubtful. He has this conversation with Gene where he's like, didn't we have stayed in fight? Did I do the right thing? It's tough making the tough decisions as a leader. And I really like that. Get into some deep character development of Cyclops. And I just think that's really cool. Now Wolverine, sad about Morph. He could be crying, he could be mourning, but instead he gut punches Cyclops. Just walks right up to him and goes, oh, right in the stomach. I was like, dang Wolverine. Wolverine of course is upset at Cyclops' decision. And then after gut punching him, Wolverine's like, and I'm gonna take your car, and I'm gonna slice off the top of your car till Cyclops have made his car convertible. And then I'm gonna steal your car and drive away in your car to a bar because I go where I wanna go. Cyclops finds a Wolverine at the bar. There's some mutant haters at the bar. They were all earlier all like, we all want your kind around here, you mutants. And then when soon them eye blasts came out, put your, your pool table. They were like, oh, you know what? Hey, bar's yours. Cyclops also goes to visit Jubilee's Paris foster dad. He calls Guy Rich. He narks on Cyclops for the Sentinel to show up. He regrets it later. He's all like, hey Cyclops, I made a mistake. I made a call I should have made. You need to get out of here. But still, dad, come on. Sure enough, a Sentinel shows up. He's all, stand down. And Cyclops is all like, of course. Not. It's the 90s, what do you expect? Cyclops damages a Sentinel and when a Sentinel gets damaged, it has to fly back to his home base to get repaired. So that was all part of Cyclops plan. I break the Sentinel, he goes back. We follow him and then time for some X-Men action. We found your base in Detroit. Let's get it on. It's fighting time. Crank up that music. Wolverine is just slicing every Sentinel. This is for more. Slice. Cyclops is all pew, pew, pew. Storm is all the powers of the wind. The lightning. Gam is all pew, pew, pew. Even Jubilee breaks free, starts putting them energy blasts out there. Pew, pew. Man, woo. Sweet Saturday morning goodness. The X-Men save the day today. But you know there will be another fight another day. And then Jubilee goes back to her parents and is like, Peace. X-Men, my new family now. I'm moving. <laughs> Yo, Holmes, Professor X's. That's the first two episodes. Pretty amazing, huh? I got so excited watching these two episodes. I was like, I need more. So I'm definitely gonna finish the first season. And then after that, I might have to keep going. This was really cool to go back and watch this cartoon. I feel like I probably enjoyed it more and appreciated it more now than I did back then. I can't wait to watch more of these episodes of X-Men, which I now can every episode on Disney+. Plus. I've heard there's some specific ways to watch it. So let me know if that's still the case. But yeah, definitely wanna keep watching the show because just from those first two episodes, I'm hooked all over again. Maybe even more so this time than before. Let me know your thoughts about X-Men the Animated Series. And if there is any series out there, cartoon, live action, that you really love, but you have not really seen me talk about too much, maybe I missed it, or maybe I don't know that much about it, tell me in the comments. Maybe it'll be a future thing that I'll revisit or watch for the very first time, even if it was nostalgic for you, because that's what I want to do. So thank you so much for watching this video. Thanks again to the Disney Bundle for sponsoring this video. Thanks to you for subscribing to this channel. If you haven't subscribed to this channel, I would love it if you did. And I will see you next time. I love you like a play cousin. I'm Audi 5000.